Good morning, GCF, Batangas. Magandang umaga rin po sa mga nakikinig sa atin via online. I praise God that He has given me another chance to preach His Word today. So, kamusta po tayong lahat? If you're a sports fan, probably this is a very exciting time for you. Because just the other day, officially po, binuksan po ang 2020 Tokyo Olympics. It was supposed to happen last year, but as we all know, due to the pandemic, they had to postpone it. But here we are, and ako po, as a big basketball fan, I'm looking forward to the basketball games. It's also interesting to see if the Philippines can finally win its first ever gold medal. Different people look forward to different sports. Pero marami rin po yung nag-aabang sa spectacle ng opening and closing ceremonies. Okay, where we see athletes marching and waving the flags of their countries high and proud and just honored to represent their countries. And then they will go through the games. At alam naman po natin na hindi po lahat magwawagi. Some will bring home medals, but a lot will come out empty-handed. Okay? But interestingly, when we go to the closing ceremonies to cap off the Olympics, makikita po natin na ang mood po ng mga athletes remain the same. They're still proud and raising the banners of their countries high and proud. In victory or in defeat, they are proud to represent their countries and honored to represent their countries. Our topic today is, the Lord is my banner. If you see a person raising the Philippine flag, maaari pong ibig sabihin po nun ay siya po ay isang Pilipino at citizen ng Philippines. Likewise, if we raise the banner of the Lord through our lives, okay, it could mean that we are representatives of God here on earth. And our lives must be worthy to being citizens of heaven. So today po, this morning, my prayer is uh, everyone will be touched that after this message, whatever circumstances we may experience in our lives, whether we are in victory or in defeat, it is the Lord's banner that we will raise high in our lives. And people will see God in us. Okay, I'm so excited for today, but before that, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for today, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to preach your word. May nothing but the truth come out from my mouth, Lord God, and be with each and everyone who will listen to your, to your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I ask everyone to please stand as we read the word of God aloud together? Okay, our scripture reading is found in Exodus chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. Verse 8. Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with a sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner, saying, A hand upon the throne of the Lord, the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to gen generation. Okay, you may now all be seated. Okay, let's praise God for the reading of his word. All right. Okay. If you would notice on the scripture that we just read, yung sequence of events po nila ay pwede po nating ma-compare sa buhay po nating Kristiyano. Okay? Later on, we'll go through it one by one, verse per verse, and we will see that 
it is indeed a typical journey of an authentic Christian. Okay, just like the Israelites, tayo po ay naka-experience ng suffering sa buhay natin. But our response is to live in faith. Because we believe that everything works out for the good of those who love God. And then, we reinforce that faith by having a prayerful relationship po sa Kanya. And we trust that whatever God's response is to our prayer, okay, whether we are in victory and in defeat, we consider those as blessings. Okay? And as Christians, we don't boast about these blessings, but rather, what we do is we give back all the glory to Him by declaring that the Lord is the banner of our lives. Okay, let's begin with verse 8. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. So, dito pa lang po, kita na po natin yung suffering ng mga Israelites. And this was an unprovoked attack. The Israelites were completely caught off guard. Just a brief background about the Amalekites. The Amalekites are descendants of Esau. Okay? They had this intense hatred towards the Israelites. Kung yung mga ibang nations po, nanginginig by the mere mention of the God of Israel because of the different miracles he has done. Not the Amalekites. In fact, since they are godless warriors, the more motivated they became to conquering and defeating the nation of Israel. And ito pong particular battle po na to is the first war of Israelites. So you could just imagine the fear that they must have felt okay, during that time. Because they're going up against these ruthless warriors who have basically dedicated their whole lives for battles like this. Samantala, on the other side, alam naman po natin na ang mga Israelita ay namuhay po bilang mga alipin. They've been wandering around the desert for quite some time and uh, they don't have enough food and uh, water that will give them nourishment and strength. Anyone who would analyze this battle would say that this is an easy victory for the Amalekites. Yes, they were caught off guard. Ang Israelites po, they were caught off guard. And hindi po ba tayo rin po um, with our, the problems that is coming to our lives? Sometimes we are caught off guard by these problems. Let's take the pandemic for an example. The COVID-19 pandemic has significantly altered our lives. And we've greatly suffered, whether uh, we've suffered physically, emotionally, <clears throat> financially, and sadly, even spiritually. And just when we thought that things are about to get better, may dumating naman po na bagong variant. At ito nga po yung Delta variant. So people, you know, people are confused. Ano po ba ang purpose nito mga sufferings na to sa buhay natin? And sometimes even as Christians, we wonder, okay, the purpose of our sufferings um, and why God allows sufferings in our lives. So let me give two reasons why God allows sufferings in our lives. First is for discipline. In Hebrews 12, 7 to 8, it says it is for Discipline that you have to endure, God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. So yes, God allows sufferings um, to correct us and to discipline us. Um, kami po ng wife ko, we're very blessed to have uh, positive influences around us when it comes to uh, disciplining our children. Alam naman po natin na napakahirap po gawin yan. And sometimes even to the point of using this, a spanking rod. So kitang-kita naman, kita-kita sa mga faces nila na gusto nila tong spanking rod. So, uh, yes, um, I, I would like to take this opportunity to, to really <laughs> recommend ito pong spanking rod, okay? Because, um, yes, by using this, we have instilled somehow in our kids na meron pong consequences talaga ang mga magiging misbehaviors nila. And what's good about the spanking rod is uh, at the back of it, eh, meron pong guidelines on how to properly execute the process of spanking. 
It should not be spontaneous. Okay, we should explain clearly to our children why, what they've done wrong. Okay, and after everything, after spanking the kids, we should affirm our love to them. Okay, and still say that despite of their misdeeds, mahal pa rin po natin sila. Okay, so I recommend this to the young parents who have young children in our church, not to those parents who have big children or teenagers. Hindi na po yan tatalab sa kanila. Baka po masira pa yung spanking rod pagka pinalo niyo po yung mga teenagers niyo. So there's a different way of disciplining them. So, uh, sorry. Okay, so yes, as sufferings are consequences of our sins. Alam po natin yan. But sometimes even Christians, no, we, hear, we hear them say, Uh, why, why, why do I continuously suffer in my life? Hindi ba nagsiserve naman ako sa church and I have a lot of ministries? Or why, why am I having financial troubles? Hindi ba week, weekly naman po ako nagbibigay ng tithes? Sometimes nagkaka-amnesia po tayo, even as Christians, dun po sa mga naging kasalanan natin in the past. Yes, we may be giving our tithes religiously, week in and week out, but have we examined our hearts? if we are indeed giving with a cheerful heart. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Okay? So going back to the Israelites, the attack of the Amalekites against them, okay, it could very well be a consequence of their past sins. Just last week, we talked about, uh, during the preaching of Elder Chito, that the Israelites, they have a grumbling lifestyle. Okay? And grumbling is considered a sin because it shows they lack faith in God. So, um, through, this, through this attack, maybe God is testing their faith. Maybe God is correcting them that they should have uh, deeper faith to, to, to God, to the God next time. Another reason for our sufferings is for character building. In Romans 5, 3 to 4, not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. I'm sure there is particular suffering in your lives that you can attribute to why you turned out to, you turned out to be the person you are today. Okay? Ako po, meron po akong isang particular suffering na naiisip. Okay? This happened a long time ago. I was working for this company as a sales agent. I was fresh out of college, two months into the job, and nag-crash po yung sasakyang minamaneho ko. In fact, it fell, it fell off into a ravine. Okay. So don't wonder bakit po buhay pa ako ngayon. <laughs> Hindi naman po ganun kataas yung, yung bangin, but it did hit a house, and I suffered physical injuries in the process. But what really lingered in me is not the physical pain, but the emotional trauma that went on with it. I was very young during that time. I was, I was immature and very vulnerable. So I just wanted to quit, to resign. So umuwi po ako sa Batangas. Kinausap ko po yung daddy ko, si, si Sir Aboy. Sabi ko, Dad, syempre with emotions. Tinatry kong dramahan. I'm an actor kasi. So, <laughs> so Dad, Dad, ayoko na, Dad. Uh, I think hindi ko na kaya. Uh, dito na lang ako, mag-work na lang ako para sa'yo. So yes, I was expecting him you know, to comfort me. Siyempre, ginalingan ko yung acting ko. Eh. So, but instead, what he said was this. Dahil lang dyan, susuko ka na? Ano, babalik ka na sa saya ng nanay mo? <laughs> sa saya ni Deacon Espelli. <laughs> so, yeah, it was painful for me to hear that from him. But then, looking back, I realized na, that if it weren't for the suffering, and if, if it weren't for what my dad said, that encouraged me to go back to work, to finish what I've started, I would not have um, experienced all the learnings that I experienced ko po dun sa company. Na yon. So I worked there for two years. And I can consider that it became a really a turning point, not just in my professional life, but really in my life in general. So, and I can attribute my, me, myself now, to that suffering that happened to me. So it really built my character and made me more enduring. 
So if we know now kung, kung, ano, kung ano ang mga purposes ng Panginoon sa sufferings natin, then it will be natural for us to be living in faith. So in verse 9, sabi, So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So we can just, we can just sense here the, the calmness of Moses, that he knew exactly what to do in the face of that attack. As long as, hinailat ko po dito, as long as he had the staff of God in his hand. The staff of God. This is the same staff that initiated the plagues in Egypt that paved the way for the Israelites to come out from slavery. This is the same staff that parted the Red Sea and the same staff that provided them food and water when they desperately needed it. The staff of God is a, repre- is a representation of God's faithfulness in their lives. And um, yes, okay, God's faithfulness in their lives. And that kind of, um, and that kind of uh, relationship between Moses and God, it, it doesn't happen overnight, okay? We remember, we remember Moses being very reluctant in the beginning. During the burning bush, when God revealed to him that he will be the deliverer of the Israelites, we know that he was very reluctant, okay? But over time, okay, through his faith, and uh, God has proven to him that he is the all almighty God that he can trust and that can protect the Israelites. So, ganun din po tayo when it comes to our relationship with our God. Okay? It takes time and effort. It takes time for us to, to really um, get to know him through prayer, through immersing in the word of God, through fellowship with other Christians. And once we are deeper in our relationship with him, we get to know him better. We get to know his promises more and more. And these are the promises that we will use, okay, in such hard times, in such sufferings that happen in our lives. Okay. Just to, just to share a story, um, yung mga kids ko po, usually when they experience physical pain, let's say nadatapa po sila or nauuntog, their tendency really is to cry. And sometimes, alam mo naman na they're just pretending to cry. Di ba? Hindi ko na po gagayahin yung iyak po nila. But, so, so sabi ko sa kanila, if it's not too painful, if something happens to you, if, if it's not too painful, or if, if it's not too ouchy, don't cry. Sabi ko, don't cry. Just say, I'm okay. Say, I'm okay. So, in a way, yun din po yung way ko to assess if the injury is serious or, or not. Um, but for us Christians, one way to really manifest our faith to our God is to say, we're gonna be okay. Okay? Despite the, even, uh, despite the seriousness of our troubles, we are gonna be okay because we believe that He is the God that will never leave us nor forsake us. But, you know, we're going to be okay, but it doesn't mean that we cannot cry out to our God. Okay. So three months ago, I was hospitalized uh, due to bacterial pneumonia. And sobra pong uncertain nung mga panahong yun. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, if, I will, <laughs> if I will live. But, but yes, being, being a, a, a Christian, I'm really entrusting everything to God. And, and I wanted to say, I'm okay, Lord, kayo na pong bahala, you are sovereign, and you, were, you will deliver me from this uh, suffering. But then, I, uh, I had my CBC check because it's a, it's a protocol in the hospital. And when the result of the CBC came out, I got the shock of my life. When the doctor revealed to, to me, to me and my wife, that my blood had abnormal, uh, my cells had, uh, my blood had abnormal cells, okay? So these abnormal cells, it's serious because it, could, it, it, can, re- it can suggest that I have leukemia. Wow. So when everything, when everything sank in, um, 
I was praying to God and, and saying to God that, yes, Lord, um, I know I'm going to be okay because uh, um, you're, you're in control. But you know, sometimes while I was in the hospital, I couldn't help but worry. I couldn't help but be anxious. And I was thinking about my wife. I was thinking about my kids. All I could do really is to cry out to God and to plead to him to remove th those cancer cells in my blood. Um, and then two weeks after, uh, I, uh, I had my CBC again. And praise God na nawala na po yung cancer cells. So nawala na po yung abnormal cells in my blood. So what a relief. But looking back, I, I was wondering or I was questioning my, my faith. Why did I worry so much? Or why did I become very, very anxious? But then the Lord made me realize that in the midst of our sufferings, we can say we're okay, but it doesn't mean that we cannot cry out to Him. Because that's the beauty of our relationship with God. We can just express different ranges of our emotions towards Him. Kung tayo po ay galit, kung tayo po ay takot, Kung tayo po ay balisa, these emotions we can really isigaw po natin sa Panginoon. Because in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Present our requests our worries to God, and what will we have in return? We will have the peace in Jesus Christ. Moving on, okay, prayer. Verse 10, sabi po, so Joshua did as Moses told him and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill, whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. And whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it while Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Okay, we're going to have a game. Can everyone raise your hands for me? Come on, yon, okay. So, pati po yung mga nanonood via online, patagalan po to, patagalan. Ang, kung sino po manalo, may, may GC daw po sa, sa City Mart. Well, siyempre, loko. Okay, you can put your hands now. Siyempre, loko lang po yun. <laughs> Hindi po ako pwede mag-games dito because nawarn na po ako ni Pastor Hizon. Now, if I go beyond my time limit, bumubuka na daw po yung floor. <laughs> Nauhulog na daw po yung preacher. So, so anyway, kidding aside, yes, as you can see in the faces of my daughters here, pinapa, pinapagawa ko kasi sa kanila to eh. And then, um, it's really tiring, Okay. Ito siguro, minutes pa lang to. They, they felt really tired right away. So, just, just imagine, just imagine the, the burning pain that Moses had to endure, okay, during that time. Because ang sabi po dito, his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So, in my estimation, that could you know, very well be around 12 hours na nakataas lang po yung kamay ni Moses. But he had no choice. He had to do it. Because every time that he puts his hand down, what's happening? Sabi po dito, ano pong nangyayari? Natatalo po ang Israelites. Okay, so he had to persevere. And good thing that Aaron and her were there with him throughout, throughout that time, just supporting him. Okay, and and um, plead, pleading him not to give up. So ano po bang ibig sabihin ito? Actually, the Hebrew way of praying really is to raise your hands up. So I believe that during this time, Moses was really praying to God, okay? Praying to him, and he's not putting his hands down, okay? He wants to keep his prayer strong until the Israelites defeat, defeat the Amalekites. So which brings me to ask everyone, how's your prayer life, okay? How, how resilient are we when it comes to praying to our God, Okay? Yes, we start out strong, okay? When you're praying for something, you start, out, you start out strong. But then, what if God is making you wait? Okay? Unti-unti po ba nating binababaan na po ang ating mga kamay at 
um, naiinip na po tayo, napapagod na po tayo sa pag-antay sa sagot ng Panginoon. So, just like Moses, okay, whenever we're, we pray, we should be fervent in our prayers. Okay? And, and maybe, okay, maybe the God, our prayers are not aligned to His will. So, the harder that we should pray, the harder that we should pray that we may discern kung ano po pa talaga ang will ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. I praise God here in our church, we have a lot of Aarons and hers, okay, that serves as our intercessories, yeah, and that prays with us in the midst of our trouble, okay? So we have our growth group, okay? We have our prayer meeting every Wednesday um, where we can just gather and pray for each other. And we have the um, Facebook prayer line, okay? So... Marami pong pwedeng magdasal po sa atin um, when we are experiencing problems in our lives. Because, we, because yes, we need all the intercessions that we can have. Okay. Blessings. Okay, blessings. What a blessing Moses and the Israelites got during this time. Verse 13, and Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. This is a very great blessing because just like what I've, um, what I've explained a while ago about the Amalekites, these are really ruthless warriors and no one is really um, expecting Israelites to win. Okay? The, stack, the, the, the odds are stacked against them. But they, they had God. Okay? They had God and God allowed this victory to happen. In the different problems of our lives, sometimes it may seem that the odds are stacked against us. Okay? If we're experiencing health problems, it could suggest that it's impossible for us to overcome it. If we're experiencing financial problems, maybe it's hopeless na magkakaroon pa po tayo ng financial breakthrough. But if we have our God, then we, we cannot underestimate Him. Because just like the victory he granted the Israelites, okay, that is what he could also grant to us. And we know always that God is bigger than our problems. Let's talk about sufferings again. Okay? Sometimes even if we pray hard for it, we still continue to suffer. Okay? So blessings pa rin po ba yun? Okay? Sabi po ng kanta kanina, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good. And I, I go back to, to the reasons I explained a while ago, um, the reasons for our sufferings. Ultimately, sufferings happen to us for our own good, for God to correct us, and for our character to be stronger. So yes, again, I will repeat it, in victory and in defeat, we trust that these are all blessings from God. And we should give thanks regardless of our situation. So, okay, what do, you, what do we usually do when we receive these blessings from God? Okay, we give back all the glory to Him. Okay, we raise the Lord's banner in our lives. It is only through Him that everything, uh, that all our victories uh, were made possible. Verse 14, sabi, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in the book, and recite it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is my banner, saying a hand upon the throne of the Lord. The Lord will have war with Amalek from generation generation. So here we see that Moses cannot take credit for, for anything. He cannot boast about this victory because only through God that this victory was made possible. And God made sure of it because his instructions were very specific. Na isusulat po ni Moses yung lahat ng nangyari po that day in a book, okay, as a memorial. 
But he had another instruction. Sabi po, ng, sabi po ni Lord, he had to recite it in the ears of Joshua. Okay, so why is it important that Joshua really, really uh, knows about this? Um, well, Joshua is the, you know, is the recognized uh, successor of Moses. He's appointed to be the successor of Moses. And just like the faith that Moses showed to God, ganun din po dapat ang faith ni Joshua. Okay, when it's, her, when it's his turn to lead the Israelites. So he should be the strong and courageous leader that will lead the Israelites to the promised land despite all this you know, sufferings that's happening to them. And when I look at the relationship of Moses and Joshua, um, I couldn't help but, you know, but think about it as a discipleship relationship. Joshua being the disciple and Moses being the discipler, okay, modeling to Joshua okay, how to be the man of God, how to be a man of God. And we know that Joshua turned out to be a man of God. We had, you know, we had a series on the book of Joshua okay, about that. Um, when God revealed all those miracles and when Moses was really showing this tremendous faith to God, guess who was there observing, learning, absorbing everything? It was Joshua. Okay? Um, which, which, which brings me to the thrust of our church. Ano po ba yon? Okay. To make authentic multiplying disciples. So, how are we when it comes to this aspect of our Christian lives? Have we been actively making Joshua's in our Christian lives? If hindi pa po, I really pray that the Lord will really encourage you um, to really take this seriously and not take this for granted because um, according to Matthew 28, as we know, that the core of our, of our Christianity is really to go out and make disciples. Okay? To make authentic, multiplying disciples. Okay. And then in verse 15, sabi po, Moses built an altar and called the name of it, The Lord is My Banner. So, just like the Olympic athletes, um, that I explained at the start of my message, okay? In victory or in defeat, they are still proud to represent their countries. Sa atin naman po, in comfort, sa kaginhawaan po, o sa ating uh, sufferings, yun din po ang dapat na isinisigaw po natin. The Lord is my banner. And when it comes to showing that the Lord is His banner in His life, Really, ang top of mind ko po is, is this Bible character, si Job. So we all know the story of Job. Okay? Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a man of God, a follower of God. He had, he had everything. Okay? He had properties, he had wealth, he had a beautiful family. But then, God tested his faith by taking away everything from him. His health was gone. His wealth was gone, and even his family was gone. He had nothing. And in the midst of nothingness, in the midst of nothingness, sabi po ng asawa niya, i-curse mo na yung God na sinuserve mo, okay? And renounce your faith. But what did Job, how did Job respond to that? In Job 1.21, he says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, what an amazing response that was. Because Job was well known during that time. Alam po ng mga tao doon na siya po ay isang faithful servant ng Panginoon. And I'm sure when this crisis happened in his life, a lot of people were observing. A lot of people were observing how will he react? 
Okay? They, they're, observing, they're observing if his faith would remain the same. But we know that his faith never wavered. And in fact, it became even stronger. And I could just imagine um, all the people that, that were brought closer to, to God. Dahil po dito sa pinakitang faith ni Job. Crisis in our lives are opportunities. Opportunity for what? Opportunity to really amplify the Lord in our lives. The bigger the crisis we experience, the bigger the opportunity for us to de- just to declare that our faith will never waver and the Lord is still our banner. So this is my last slide. Um, this is a personal compass. Okay. So it's very useful dahil ano po ba ang purpose ng compass? It gives us direction. So we need direction in life. Whether ito po ay para sa business, para po sa, um, sa family po natin. But for this particular compass, we're gonna apply our spiritual lives dito po sa compass na to. So we're gonna talk about, we're gonna make a spiritual compass. And here on top, dun po sa north side, is our true north. This is where we want to go. This is our mission, vision, and values um, in our Christian lives. And really, from what we've learned today, what we really want is to, is to just to raise the Lord's banner on top. Just like how the flag is raised on top of the pole, si Lord po ang dapat na nasa buhay, ang evident po sa buhay natin. Okay? And, medyo maliit lang po yung ano, but yung meron po dito mga, yung sa upper half of the compass, Anjan po yung mga enablers, reinforcers, our support system, which basically, the people that God sends, the people that God sends for us to, to, not, to be encouraged to pursue our goal. So, nandyan po yung family natin, nandyan po yung churchmates natin, friends, and even our growth group is there. And then in the middle, in the middle po, yun po yung mga evolving roles in our lives. Because as Christians, Diba? Alam naman po natin that we cannot be stuck to being a baby Christian. Okay? We should grow deeper and deeper in our faith in Him and we should be more mature, more mature every day in our faith. So yung mga, may mga waning roles po yan saka may mga evolving roles. So from bef- if before we are disciple, then eventually our role one day will, would evolve to be a discipler. Okay? But what we should really watch out for is the lower half of this compass. Because we, we, do, we do not want to go to the other side. The other side is the wrong way. Traps, temptations, um, these are the things that we should avoid. Distractions, hurdles, obstacles. Ito po yung um, gawa ng kaaway po sa atin that will distract us to pursue our goal. So sufferings could be used by the enemy to tell us that it's not worth it. Give it all up. And we have people around us, yung mga bad influences around us. Even our work, even our work, if we become too addicted to it, you know, could be a distraction. Social media. Sinama ko na rin po yung social media dahil uh, alam naman po natin na it's also very time-consuming. And in the midst of everything, ang importante po sa compass na to is the one in the middle. And that is really the thing that really grounds us. What grounds us Christians? And really, the one that grounds us is Jesus Christ. The Savior that came down here on earth to die for our sins. The Savior that gave us grace and mercy when we don't really deserve it. So, whenever we have troubles in our lives, Whenever we feel that we cannot do it anymore and everything, everything seems hopeless, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. And just like in, in this compass, ang cornerstone po ng buhay natin is si Jesus Christ. And He will really be an inspiration to us to really pursue righteousness, Christ-likeness, 
the different fruits of the spirits be a reality in our lives. And I believe that if we really have Jesus in our hearts, then truly we can say that the Lord is our banner. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, again for today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we can just call you, Lord, our banner. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us, Lord, to represent you here on earth. May our lives, Lord, be worthy of this. That in the face of defeats, in the face of sufferings, Lord, we may still pursue Christ-likeness, Lord. And we will never give up on the race that you set before us. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on Jesus. That people will see you in us. And then we can truly say, Lord God, that the Lord is our banner. Thank you, Lord, for the message today. We honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.